Uh, let's do uh, Psycho Circus. I knew. I knew you were, dude. I well, knew it was the you first were one. the creepiest. It's you literally the first the one. Hang on. We got the wrong colored balls, I think. Our balls are all over the place. Oh, the pants. Look at the pants. The pants on, on the this pants. thing. Before we begin the video, I would like to give a round of applause. To VFS VFX artists reacts to bad and great CGI hitting 50 episodes. Uh, Nico, Ren, the crew over at Corridor, congratulations on uh, <laughs> congratulations on accomplishing this, and also congratulations on uh, five million subs on the Corridor Crew channel. Jesus Christ. I mean, you guys, like, you guys knock it out of the park every time. So, I'm not going to say that, <clears throat> I'm not going to say that, you know, this is, you know, I, I'm going to, I'm going to make this a more regular thing. I mean, it depends on the reaction I get from all of you all out there. Because if I don't get a good enough response on these, I, I can't keep reacting to them. I mean, that's, I mean, I enjoy these. I watch them in my spare time, but I, I, <clears throat> I want to enjoy these and you know as soon as possible but someone on our patreon recommended that uh, I I check these out again which you know here we are so I'm checking out another uh, episode of VFX artists react to bad and great CGI so if I can be perfectly honest these guys <clears throat> are just I mean cord corridor they just are able to do whatever the hell they want and i don't know here in the future i may ask for their help even though it'd probably be too much uh it'd probably be too much uh for them uh or, or probably too much in terms of us to pay them because sheesh the work that these guys do i mean i'm not gonna say i know i i i i wouldn't mind entertaining the idea of bringing corridor digital to work with us on certain things but <clears throat> You know, if we're able to do that in the future, we'll see. But, again, man, VFX artists uh, react to bad and great CGI number 50. Uh, I'm just going to give this a watch. We're going to see what kind of shenanigans the uh, movie makers get up to. And, uh, yeah, I guess let's get into it. Here we go. So this isn't some random dude. This is pretending to be Ryan Reynolds as the super buff guy. They were like, here's what we filmed, and then we deleted it. Did you guys stop watching the foreground characters and just start looking at the background? Thanks to Bessie for sponsoring this I, video. I think I know Stick what he's going to talk about with that. you can get $25 off your order today. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Visual Effects Artist React. I'm joined by Ren and Sam, and we've got some <laughs> great clips to look at today. Ren, stop it. Jam. We have Darby O'Gillian and the Little People. What? That's, that's, Darby, what a Darby title. Darby O'Gillian. Darby. Just you wait. Darby. Also, Loki is finally completely released on Disney Plus, so we are finally going to be diving into that. You know, it's a really exciting time for movies because in the last two weeks, I've seen two movies in theaters, and it's awesome. I saw Black Widow, and I saw <clears> Old <throat> just for the fun of it. Does anybody get old? Oh. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> they get old. <laughs> old app. <laughs> old F. Old F. Hell yeah. Oh, oh boy. All right, let's watch this. <clears throat> you picked up Here the Tesseract go. breaking reality. I want you to help us fix it. I haven't seen Loki yet. Loki is great. Honestly, I think it's my favorite Marvel show they've made yet. I'm a I, I haven't watched all of it yet. So there's things I might see here that uh, there's stuff in the trailers that I've I've seen that I know is coming. But mm, I get I hope. I hope they don't talk about anything that's in like episodes five and six because those are the only two that Nick and I have not reacted to. Um, we've, uh, you know, we've watched. We're up to. Ep we just finished episode four not too long ago, and we're probably going to finish the series next time we we watch it because I I just want to know what's going to happen. So uh, yeah. Anyway, let's go ahead and uh, get back into this. Sorry. I'm a sucker for time, <clears throat> time messing stuff, so Loki was a lot of fun. But there's a CG character in the show that Miss is inspired minutes. by very old timey cartoon effects, and it was really interesting. Voiced by to Tara do Strong, to bring this which to life. I did not know. And that would lead to the destruction of the timeline and the collapse of reality as we know it. There's lighting. Yeah, there's interactive lighting. Oh, is the desk completely CG? Watch it. Where's your manners? Oh, hey, quit it. 
So one of the challenges they found for this was trying to marry the real world photography in camera with the digital version of Miss Minutes because she's transparent. They actually had this really cool little LED light system that they had that they would actually move oh, around Jesus. to get the interactive lighting on the set. <clears throat> but then they would have to paint out that light. And what people don't realize is it's not just simply a matter of painting out a light. Yeah, like they're filming it in a dim office. Like yeah. you're setting yourself up for a challenge. They went through a lot of effort just to recreate the background so that it looks normal and then they would relight it after the fact. So I don't actually know how useful this light ended up being at the end of the day. Look at the actual color quality on the ground, on the light around it, and then look at the final thing. I'm, I'm seeing what they're doing. It looks like they're fudging out the background a lot because you look at the background here, it's fudged out a lot because it's like put out of focus more than more so than it is here uh it's it's like almost also yeah the windows here um wait a second yeah all the reflections okay that there they would have to paint over that as well as this because you know look miss minutes is there there she is <clears throat> there's her hand there's the back of her <clears throat> also her translucent glow is is a more deep orange than this this is a bright yellow this is a very bright yellow so i guarantee you they had to put like a LUT over top of it to make it this color and also to provide the uh, okay let's go ahead and let's watch this that's oh, just a new shot it's, it's all cg <laughs> it's basically a new shot yeah exactly hold on i don't know if, i don't Wait, know what really saying, but what i'm seeing is they're like here's what we filmed and then we deleted it <laughs> no, that's exactly it. It was purely for reference. You can see her reflection on the tea kettle. Yeah. And then when they show the actual light that they built, it's a completely different reflection. So they end up having to recreate so much of what you see. You know, that's the thing. We're always talking about the best looking images are when you combine practical and digital. The problem is that it usually doesn't work as seamlessly or as well as you might imagine not it should. As, and yeah, at the very least, you get well. the lighting on <clears throat> Tom Wilson. That is true. One last thing from Loki that I want to touch true. on yeah. is this idea of blue screening anything. Oh, that looks like a tough blue screen right there. Granted, this is probably taken on a less high quality camera than the one they're filming with. The sensor is probably going, whoa, that's a lot of blue and making it look like way crazier than it does in the footage. That's a good point. That might actually be the case. If I was sent the shot to key out the blue, but I got to keep the ground, I got to keep the people. The hell? What do you do? You cut it out by hand. Cut it out by hand. That's the answer. Oh. When it comes to keying something, it's usually a whole bunch of talented roto artists. Yeah. They're going in and they're making very accurate and detailed track mats the same way that we've done for a hundred years. If they tried to swap that out with a green screen, yeah, it'd be easier to key out, but now you're introducing trouble with a green spill. So by keeping it blue, yes, it's going to require a little bit more manual work, but the end result is going to look better. I think there's over 500 shots just in episode five. Every shot is basically movie level caliber. They're all pretty Jesus. impressive. I mean, Disney probably went, you have $10,000 <clears> a <throat> second. And they're sitting there looking at every second of footage, but like, I have $10,000, you wanna try to make this one second better? And they did that for every second of the episode. $10,000 a second? Well, okay, $10,000 a second. And I think every episode of Loki is like, 50 minutes at least because i know that i know i think there's a couple episodes that are like a little bit over 50 but there's some that are under 50 so let's see so <clears throat> so average of 50 minutes times 10,000 let's see so wait so hold on hold on at every second of footage, but like, I mean, Disney probably went, you have $10,000 per second. $10,000 per second. So 10,000 times 60 seconds times 50 comes out to <clears throat> around $30 million times six. <sighs> Loki's final cost, 180 million dollars holy mother oh Whew. i wouldn't know what to do with 180 million dollars on certain projects i mean if we were to use that on the offer i don't know what the hell i i, I mean 
Jesus criminy. <laughs> okay, okay. Anyway, sorry. Let's, let's get back into this. And they're sitting there looking at every second of footage, be like, I have $10,000, you want to try to make this one second better? And they did that for every second of the episodes. <laughs> Wait, how much money is that? That's a lot of money. I think that might be a little more money than you can handle. It's 100, 180 50 million. Times 60 times 60 times 10. Oh, they're doing thousand dollars. Wait, 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 wow. 1.8 billion, a little high. Oh, Nico. No, it's six. Times 60. You're supposed to, it's supposed to be six, bro. I mean, there's only six episodes. Times $10,000. 1.8 little high. Let's knock that down. <laughs> $1,000 per second. <laughs> the most expensive movie ever made. Yeah, most expensive miniseries ever made for $1.8 billion. Mark Zuckerberg personally funded this one, and he wanted it to be a love letter to how great of a human being he is and how stupid, you know, everyone is for not having Facebook. I, I do find it pretty fascinating, though, that the entire budget for Loki was around $150 million, and that's oh, 150 the budget of a million. pretty big blockbuster movie. $150 million in production costs. They actually might have been more expensive. Wait, do the math for production. $1,000 per second for 55 minutes. Hey, Siri, 150 is $150 million. So $4,000 Okay, okay. So, average of 50 minutes per... Okay, so, wait a second. So, $150 million divided by... See, divided by 60. Oh, wait. Divided by 6. Divided by 60. Divided by 50. So, around 833,000. 833,000. Or 8,333. $8, Jesus, my brain. Oh, but for a second of an but for a second of CG, dude. Episode of CG oh, time is six. Long time. I was saying six seven thousand five hundred. No, I already did that. Wait, no, 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 hold up. No, look, each episode is <laughs> no, no, oh Jesus, hold that. guys, it's not minutes? that hard. It's so basic five math. Five thousand dollars. So then divided by sixty. Eight thousand three hundred thirty-three. I know it was eight thousand. It's almost ten thousand dollars a second. I call oh my, it. You just my, almost, bro. If I had ten thousand dollars put in my bank tomorrow versus eight thousand, eight thousand three hundred thirty-three, I'd choose the ten thousand because that's that's seventeen percent more. That's you know, it's not seventeen percent, but that's a good percentage more. Oh my the math God. wrong. You just did the math wrong. No, I didn't. I got the same. I got the exact same number you did. No, no, I know. But before, when you got the one billion number, your thumb slipped or something. Yeah. When I gut guessed it was ten thousand dollars a second, I actually was not that far Okay. Off. So, anyways, full circle. Nico's right. We are so beyond VFX artists react right now. No, Look, no, but, you're not. No, you're not, man. We do this shit all the time, Ren. I mean, this this is just how it goes. To deal with money. This is totally VFX artists react. I can be honest. There's a part of me that hates how expensive this stuff is. Yeah. It's, uh... Yeah, it hurts. I'm me too. <laughs> Honestly, if I had 25, if I had money to throw around to met, let these guys make whatever movie they wanted as their own production company, I would. I'm already donating to their to their website. I'm already donating to uh, you know the Corridor Digital uh, you know website, and you know I'm I'm sponsoring them as best I can, and I I want to be able to see their projects come to life and yeah I, I i i love seeing it i love seeing it all come together uh but i i if i had okay if all of a sudden netflix came up to me and was just like hey we want you to make uh make this here and we want you to uh we want you to make uh, all this it's like okay what are you gonna do it's like i am going to use Corridor, I'm going to use Corridor Digital as our via, as our VFX house. And we're going to work with them to film as best we can. You know, Jacob, I, I'd still put Jacob in charge of, like, overall, like, direction and all that. Because Jacob's a really good director. Jacob is just really good at just organizing, planning, and just amazing at, at doing that. And then, of course, I'd probably hire the Sutton Brothers again because they're lighting uh, on the offer. I, I, I can't take... All, I can't take like any credit for how the offer was filmed. I, I showed them what I had in my mind's eye, and they brought it to life. I mean, damn. What's happening? Up the jam. 
Space Jam. A new legacy. I have not seen this movie yet. I used to like the original uh, Space Jam, and then I actually rewatched it and was disappointed by how it didn't hold up. Red. Yes, it's not supposed war. to. So I am noticing that the furry cartoon characters have a nice little layer of fur, but all the skin characters doesn't quite look like properly skin shaded, like maybe slightly lacking a little bit. I, I don't know. How gross and weird would it look like if the cartoon characters had this like fleshy, <laughs> translucent skin? They have to have that toy feel, I feel like. Listen, yeah. Ron, Ron, this is basketball, but with a spin to it. Does seeing all the CG characters, does it feel like that kind of takes it away from the cartoon aspect of things? Well, in the original Space Jam, there's a bit of a technological marvel with it, whereas Michael Jordan, who was a human being, in a cartoon world for most of it, and eventually cartoons joining him on the court, which is a bit of Roger Rabbit kind of thing. Yeah, totally. A pretty big yeah. deal, like, from a visual effects standpoint. At this point, not that big of a deal. When LeBron James goes to Toon World, he becomes a cartoon Yeah, author. There is no the... photoreal LeBron James with cartoon characters. They just skip that entirely. He's and they just put him with cartoon. CGI characters. Rabbit season. All right, yeah. Now say, I'm hot and wild. Oh, there's your Chungus. Oh, big Dude, Chungus. <laughs> Chungus in the movie? Did we just catch this one glimpse of him being a Chungus? <laughs> there you go. That's a reference. That old in my wife. Yeah. The visual effects are great, but there's so much happening that it makes it really hard to find a focus to the scene because I'm trying yeah. to watch the characters and they look awesome. It's just like, holy crap. It's basically is. fireworks. That's all it is. It's, it's basically just fireworks with no narrative. That's, that's what I... When I watch this, I, I watch this in my spare time. I couldn't help but just feel like this was not, this was not good. It just, it just didn't feel, it just didn't feel like it was. I'm not gonna say it was like awful, but it was just not good. I, I gave the film like a four, maybe like a three and a half, four out of ten. It's, it's not great. It has okay moments, and some of the some of the CG stuff's awesome, but yeah. There's so much happening. It's like almost a visual overload. Did you guys stop watching the foreground characters and just start looking at the background? Oh my God, there are so many characters is in the this, background. Is this basically just Ready Player One? But with they basketball? wish. Ready they wish. <laughs> this and was the Ready only Player Mario Brothers franchise. Yeah. There's the Wicked Witch. There's the clown from it. Oh hey, it's them. The nerd the family even came. <laughs> Yay. Space Jam has decent visual effects in it, but there's, in my opinion, a miscalculation here. So, movie crowds. Generally, for the most part, the job with crowds is you just want an anonymous mass of people in the background. But what if you go, hey, what if I pick as many popular characters as I can and just sprinkle them throughout the crowd so that the audience is just playing Where's Waldo with the crowd the whole time? Oh my god, I did that. He's not wrong. I did that. I mean, this whole scene right here is literally just me playing, okay, who's that? Who's that? Where's... Like, I'm looking here. There's the mask. There's Agent Smith. There's Mr. Freeze. There's the... Is that the penguin? Fine. What the duck? No, that's Bur Burgess Meredith, this penguin. Uh, yeah, these are all, like, Warner Brothers franchise thing. Yeah, and, and that's what I noticed whenever I was playing... I was watching the movie in my spare time is it makes you immediately go, well, I'm going to stop watching the foreground. I'm going to start watching the background and all the little tricks yes! you can do. Yes! I said the exact same down. thing. That's it's example, just too oh, distracting. In the background, watch eye lines and watch hype levels. Right Come here, buddy. Got you. So Penguin, he's not looking at any of the action. Well, maybe he's noticing other characters he recognizes. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Everybody is hyped 100% the entire time. It just doesn't stop. Everyone's always cheering, even when people are quiet on the sidelines. People are screaming and clapping. You're right. I, it's funny because I'm trying to like yeah. look at the characters, but I'm more interested in the people they're featuring. Yeah. Yes, I'm more interested <laughs> in the, the background. In the background <laughs> when you are more interested in the characters in the background than you are on the story that is actually taking place in the foreground, you have failed. I'm sorry. That's who I'm looking at. Yeah, the other thing is that you have to populate hundreds, if not thousands, of 3D models of people for all of those extras in the background just so that you can then blur them all out of focus. Yeah. yeah. This is a whole third of the movie, basically. I spent the entire scene just looking at the background. I forgot entirely what happened in, in the actual foreground of the camera here. Yo, I didn't that's see replay anything. value. That's replay value, yeah. But like, I no, don't know. Isn't I don't want to watch it again. Is noticing all those? I mean, I like trying to spot these characters. I do too. I do too. It's just, it's an odd choice. 
So you might be able to tell which aliens are fake in Space Jam, but can you tell which aliens are fake in the Pentagon UFO videos that were recently released? Uh... Sam and I sat down to apply our visual effects art aside to see if we could debunk and explain the UFO videos. This video is coming out tomorrow on this channel. Tune back in then or subscribe oh. so you don't miss it. Okay. So here we have Darby O'Gill and the Little People. This is a movie about a <laughs> Wait, man. Buena Vista. This was Disney. Damn. Darb. Who I think catches a leprechaun and gets like wishes and all that kind of stuff. And here he is in their kingdom, and he's gonna play them some music, and they're gonna have a good old time. Wait, you're, t you're telling me his wish was to rule the kingdom of leprechauns? I don't know. You have to watch <laughs> the movie to find out. Away <laughs> we go. One, two, three, four. Look at that cutie. <laughs> 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 Shut up, Sam. Oh, oh, uh oh, Whoa. that's crazy. Wait, what? <laughs> Wait, what? No green screens. Oh, oh, uh -oh. oh. it's getting crazier. <laughs> Dude, he's fiddling so hard. It's like I brought you a magical instrument from the human realm, and they all like <laughs> my bodies. <laughs> we can't control them. What is happening? <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> what are you doing to us? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. Okay. The fact that this is 1959 and they're able. Uh, okay. How in the hell are they doing that? How the hell are they doing that in one shot? I mean, it's not like they can just like splice the film out and split it like that because everything is moving here. There's stuff moving back here. Like I can tell that that's a matte painting right there. That's like a matte background. But what? But I don't. I'm looking at this and I'm uh, I'm trying to figure out like what's yeah, look at this in the foreground right here. There's so much there's so much that they're playing with in terms of perspective. Holy hell! What are you doing to us? <laughs> <laughs> I won't stop playing until you give me your gold. <laughs> yes. I mean, are we Play. seeing a bunch of like forced perspective stuff? Let's talk about forced perspective real quick. So. In order to make somebody look big and somebody else look small back in the day before you could just cut people out and move them around in your screen with your computer, you basically need to have your, one actor be close to the camera and the other actors be far away because at the end of the day, the camera is just giving you a two-dimensional image. You can't look at the image and tell what's close and far wow. outside of just the cues of what you're looking at on screen, so you can fake it. So that's how they had to approach this. See, you see, the swap perspective stuff, I get, because I saw them do that in Lord of the Rings, and when they showed the stuff behind the scenes, I'm like, oh, so that's how they did it. You know, the forced perspective, you know, because you would have Ian McKellen up here, and then you would have, uh, then you'd have, uh, Billy Boyd and, uh, <sighs> Dominic Monaghan back there working, you know, on the dishes and stuff like that in the opening segment of, uh, Lord of the Rings, or in like the the opening hot, uh, Shire scene in the Lord of the Rings, but yeah, dude. Yes, I... because you know you don't have green screens, you don't have computers. They can yeah. be matting where they can cut something out and stick it in the frame, but that doesn't really let you move around. You can force perspective this one, where you have him really close to the camera and then a large set in the background. But watch as he walks off. This shot's amazing. If you're gonna do force perspective with this, there's going to be a seam in your set. There huh. would be a cutoff there of the platform that's raised up and closer to us, and then like a larger floor that's in the background. Yeah. So what they did is they actually designed their set to have these streaks painted on it, and they matched oh. the paint lines from the little platform. I see to them. I see them down there. The camera. Same yeah. Thing yeah. Hold on. Hold on. Uh, right there. The right there. From close to the camera to the platform. They had him walk close to the platform to throw out the perspective. Dude, that's awesome. Behind the camera. Same thing with this. Pause it right there. Oh, I see it! Yeah, oh, I right there. It. Yeah, his foot goes below it. His foot goes below the perspective line. So, yeah. Damn. Oh, behind the corner? That's really well and lined up! They're using the curvature of the rock to motivate the seam a little bit there. Yeah, you yeah. You really see the edges once you start looking for it. But I love this. It's so cool. Okay, but what about that shot? I think this is just a mat. That's gotta be a matted shot. Because it's gotta be a matted shot. You can't do that. <laughs> you can't do that. You can't do that. You can't do that. But the thing is, for this to be a matted shot, it means he, that he didn't just go stand there on the set. You see, if this was a matted shot, he wouldn't be able to move. That's the thing, but he's moving. How is this possible? Because that part of the set is like, that's like a 50 <gasps> foot high ceiling. Wait a minute. What if he's on a platform that's hanging in the center of a room? He could be. Because you think, how tall would that ceiling have to be? Oh. And how much wood would you have to put in that ceiling to build that? I think that's not a real ceiling. I think that's a matte painting. And if that's a matte painting, that means that he could be standing on scaffolding and the matte painting is just covering the entire yeah, scaffolding. Yeah, yeah. Oh, is this I the behind the saying. scenes for that? Yep, that's totally a freaking platform. So the dolls in the foreground. Some are dolls! Oh, 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 dolls! Oh, I didn't even notice them! I didn't even notice them! Oh my gosh, it did so good! 
I didn't even notice it. Oh, show us how it was done, please. Please. Hold on. Oh, we're piecing the piece. What? It's a mirror. It's a mirror. A mirror? Are you? <laughs> it runs <red> face. <laughs> Oh god! Oh, I'm gonna black out! Holy shit, Rin's face! <laughs> oh my god! I mean, I forget. that is so good! Mirrors! I didn't even think about that, man! Holy shit! It's about mirrors! That's all dolls and mirrors! <laughs> god damn it! Wow! It was a mirror! And it's it was not cut out. A it's a mirror where they cut a hole through the mirror. There's no mats at all. This is all 100% in camera. This wow. is insane. And there's a matte painting too. The ceiling and the stalactites oh. and stuff. Also painted on glass in front of the mirror, right off the front of the camera. It makes total sense now. You gotta keep that in your back pocket. Each time we see these old things, we're like, it could be a mirror now. It yeah. could be a mirror. I forgot about mirrors. Uh, it completely fooled me. I didn't know how the hell they pulled that shot off. Damn. That is so good. I completely forgot about mirrors as a legit trick. Here he is, the little do Oh, shit. So, Ryan shit. Reynolds has Free a movie guy. out called Free Guy. And what I like about what Ryan Reynolds does with the marketing is that he takes an untraditional approach. Instead of doing a classic trailer, you know, he does this thing where it's like it starts out as a trailer and then turns into an interview with a monstrosity. The and dude. Nico, I wanted to get Look your at this guy. on this shot. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't have time for that. I've been at this one week. <laughs> wow. So this isn't some dude. random dude. This is pretending to be Ryan Reynolds as the super buff guy. Is that just prosthetic or is that a deep fake? Because it kind of looks like a deep That's fake. That's deep fake. It has Here's to be a deep fake. Let's watch this Adam's apple. And I got to tell you. Oh, it's not moving. So yeah. It's coming in nicely. It's just staying it's still. Moving. It's not moving. Oh, it's not moving anymore. Ren, say some words. This is me pretending to be Ryan Reynolds because we look exactly the same. And I am talking now. And you can see my Adam's apple. <laughs> For this to be a deep fake, the muscular dude needs to be doing the performance. Because a deep fake is just a mask. It isn't actually somebody else's performance pasted on your face. It's your performance, you just are wearing a mask. And therefore, you would see evidence, like in this Adam's apple, of it moving as these lines are coming out. In this shot, we Jesus, see it. In that shot, the dude's body is insane. We see it in the first Look shot. Look at those we fucking don't. traps. Look at those things. Look at his arms. They're like titanium floaties. What the hell? Oh. And but his it's, hair. It's not quite lined his up. hair is that so is perfectly why I think coiffed. It's not a deep fake Look at that hair. Look at the hair. So perfectly coiffed. Jesus. That would mean the actor, whoever this buff dude is, is having to not only deliver the same lines that Ryan Reynolds is gonna have to say, he's gonna have to say it at the exact same timing and the exact same inflection. And now mm -hmm. that means Ryan Reynolds famous charisma is now locked into whatever this bodybuilder is doing with his face. But watch the facial performance. It's not that crazy. I feel like you could totally just go, hey, we need a buff dude who can like do a couple jokes. I, I feel like that's totally possible because the motion on the face, it's like, yeah, it could be like a 2D, semi 3D track, but it looks like a deep fake. It looks like the facial motion you see in a deep fake. It does look like a deep fake. I'm going to guess that it's not a deep fake. My reason for that is I think what they did here is they just filmed Ryan Reynolds locked off, directly facing camera, very little perspective changes, and he just does all his performance, and they paste that face onto this guy and deal with a little bit of morphing and stretching to make like the jawline move and stuff like that. Still really well done, and the fact that we're even discussing it like this is, you know, especially for a quick little promo piece commercial. It's like, yeah, yeah. not bad. Real quick though, there's another video that they did for the Marketing for Free Guy that I feel yeah, is particularly yeah, we relevant to this show. Well, hello there, and what's up, Reaction Faction? It's Deadpool. I'll be reacting to a trailer for a movie which I honestly thought came out like a year ago. Wow. I would like to think that this is like a shout out to us, but there's plenty of other reactions. Yeah, there's lots of React formats out there. We are not original in it. Yeah, hi. In any regard. However, it is kind of cool to see a similar format being used in marketing for this. I do feel like there's only one React show out there where it just has a straight up couch in the middle of the shot. Hey! No. Guys, we were doing that long before y'all came in doing reaction stuff. Not to say y'all y'all aren't welcome, it's just dude, I mean <laughs> We've been sitting on a uh, dude, we have been sitting on a couch. It, it we started in this basement. In here. We started down here in 2014, man. <laughs> like this is Oh my gosh, dude. So yeah, man, we were like yeah, we were down here, you know, back in like starting 2014 
and we were uh, we, we were doing reactions down here. Just us with a couch in the middle. Of, also, he called it the Reaction Faction, which, uh, you know, in early on we called ourselves Renegade Faction. So, Reaction Faction, Renegade Faction. Hello. I'm just joking. Also, you know, uh, uh, you know, I've got the charisma of a Ryan Re No, I don't. <laughs> if I had the charisma of Ryan Reynolds, I wouldn't be stuck here in a freaking basement. <laughs> Uh, you know, doing reaction videos. Oh, I, I which don't get me wrong, I love doing this, and I like I love having y'all tune in and uh, and have fun with us. But all right, let's go ahead and get back to this. Maybe they're joking about us. Maybe they're having a laugh. <laughs> Ryan, I know you're watching this right now. We're talking about your movie. I know you're seeing this. If you want to talk about this more, hit us up, and you can sit on this couch with us, and maybe we can look at the Green Lantern, and you can clarify what you've been wanting to clarify for a long time. Yeah, exactly. You can come on our show. You can sit in this seat right here, Ren. <laughs> uh, we, we, we can make room. We can make room. <laughs> hey, guys. Remember me? Oh, hi, Hello, Jordan. Ago. I'm back again to tell you about our sponsor, Bessie. Vessi is a shoe that can go anywhere and do anything. I personally use Vessi every day to work out. It doesn't matter if I'm outside and it's raining or I'm inside. It doesn't matter if I'm outside hiking and it's dry and dirty and dusty because I can just hose them off in the backyard. Vessis are 100% waterproof, not water resistant. So they're super easy to clean. Just throw them in the wash or maybe hose them down in the backyard and just let them dry. To prove that they're waterproof. There's nothing there. There's nothing there. There's nothing there. One of my favorite things about Vessies is they're sustainably made. They use less material, less water, and no animal byproduct. That means they're vegan. Vessies are made with Dymatex, a dual climate knit, which keeps you cool in the summer and warm in the winter. I can just slip my shoes on and off like socks. I barely feel them on my feet. They're super lightweight and breathable. Sometimes I forget they're even on. It doesn't matter where you go, Vessies has you covered. Oh. So do we. Click the link in the description below so you can get $25 for each <laughs> pair of Vessies you buy. You can get one for every member of the family. Anyways, enjoy the rest of this video, and I'll probably see you next week, because I'm coming for Jake's job. So we actually got... Damn, girl hardcore, man. The suggestion for looking at Free Guy from the comments of these videos. So if you are Ryan Reynolds, leave a comment down below or come onto the show, and we'll, you know, choose something from that. And if you're not Ryan Reynolds, and you just have a cool shot you want us to react to, go ahead and leave a comment down below too. Also, old VFX, I want more of them. There's some great suggestions before. Bed knobs and broomsticks, that's one of my favorites. That's my like my ace in my pocket. Bed knobs and broomsticks? Yeah, see, these guys don't know what it is yet. They have not seen Nazis fighting reanimated knights in armor. Okay, I'm intrigued now. There you go. All right. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. This was a really fun one to do. Dude, those tiny people blew my mind. Tiny people, big results. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Anyways. We'll see you guys in the next VFX Artists React. <laughs> so yeah uh i'm gonna leave a like on that and also uh if y'all uh if y'all check out their uh video you will actually see my uh comment on there which uh hopefully you all will watch and enjoy or y'all will look at and uh y'all will get a pretty good laugh out of because <laughs> so uh, god yeah so anyway this was VFX Artists React to Bad and Great CGI, number 50. Hopefully you all enjoyed, and hopefully I will see you all in the next one. So I guess until then, I'm Nate. I'll see you then. Peace out.